These student note questions at the end of the English sections are actually quite easy if you know how to deal with them. In this video, I'm going to give you a really simple three-step strategy for tackling rhetorical synthesis questions on the SAT. So step one is going to be to identify the goal. We're going to skip our notes here and we're going to go straight to the goal because every one of these questions is going to say something along the lines of which choice most effectively uses relevant information to accomplish this goal. So that's really what we want to focus on. In this case, it says the student wants to emphasize a similarity between the Choctaw code talkers and the Navajo code talkers. So the main focus here is emphasize a similarity. Step two is to eliminate answers that don't line up with your goal. So let's take a look. A, U.S. soldiers who are members of Choctaw use their native language. Okay, so if we're trying to emphasize a similarity between these two, the Navajo and the Choctaw, if it only mentions one, there's no similarity. So A is out. Looking at B, I see Navajo, but only Navajo. So the same problem there. We don't have Choctaw and Navajo, so it can't be B. C, both Choctaw code talkers and Navajo code talkers transmitted coded military messages in the soldiers' native languages. That is literally a similarity between the two, so that's probably my answer. I could just double check. D, the Choctaw code talkers, not the Navajo code talkers, served in World War I. So that's actually telling me a difference between them. So my answer is C. And you might be asking, what is step three? Step three is to look at the notes if you need to. Nine out of 10 times, you will not have to look at the notes. So I want you to get used to skipping them and only looking at them if you are forced to look at them. A little bit more on that later in the video. But for now, let's try this strategy on a medium question. And by the way, for all my fancy pants students out there, if you want some free stuff, I've got free stuff for you. Just click the link in the description. I've got workbooks, I've got cheat sheets, I've got really valuable, just free resources to help you study for your SAT. So make sure to check that out. So go ahead and pause the video and try this on your own first. But here we go. So step one, I'm going to ignore the notes and I'm going to go straight to the goal. In this case, the student wants to explain an advantage, advantage of the archive being digital. So I'm going to focus on advantage of archive being digital. And now I'm going to eliminate answers that don't match that. Over 10,000 documents related to the history of Latin American and Latino visual art are part of the archive. That doesn't say anything about digital, so nope. By offering online versions, that's digital, the ICAA's archive provides more access to these materials without removing them from their countries of origin. That is definitely an advantage of them being digital. So I'll hold on to B. C, among historical documents in the ICAA's archive are the writings of Latin America. Again, that's not mentioning anything digital, so C is out. D, the director oversaw creation of an online archive, so it does mention digital, of historical documents related to Latin American and Latino visual art. So it does mention an online archive, which is digital, but it doesn't mention any sort of advantage. It just states that it happened. So D is also out. And my answer is B. Again, we didn't have to go to step three and look at the notes. You will rarely have to look at the notes, but let's move on to a hard question and also talk about when you might need to look at the notes. All right, same deal here. I want you to pause the video, try this on your own first using the steps we've discussed, but let's take a look. Our goal in this case is to present the primary aim of the research study. All right, so that's what I'm going to focus on. A, Bosali's team wanted to better understand the mechanics of uh, behind bird's nest, wanted to better understand. So this is an aim. This is an aim, so I'm going to hold on to it. B, the researchers used laboratory models that simulated arrangement of flexible sticks and analyze points. This is telling me what they did. It's not telling me what their aim was, what their goal was, what they were hoping to find out. So B is out. C, after analyzing, they found that. So this is actually a conclusion. 
after analyzing, they found out that. I don't necessarily care what they found out. All I know is that C is a conclusion. An aim would be what they're trying to figure out. So C is not my answer. D is analyzed. The bird nests are uniquely flexible. Again, as analyzed, it's telling me their conclusion. So D is out. Just like that, even though this is rated as a hard question, hard question, I got my answer A pretty easily. So again, we didn't have to look at the notes. So why is that even a step? Well, I don't have an example for you in the College Board question bank from any of the non-active questions. I've looked through them. I'm not seeing anything, but there is one question that I'll show you in a second from one of the practice exams. So spoiler alert, coming up here, I'm gonna show a question that's actually in one of the College Board practice exams. So if you don't wanna see that, don't watch it. But I've also heard reporting from test takers that there are questions that require you to look at the notes because the goal might be something like, you know, show that the short story was more influential than the novel, something like that. And then in the answer choices, we don't necessarily know which was the short story or which was the novel. So something along those lines, you might need to look at the notes, but let me kind of show you what that would look like uh, using that example from the the exam that I was talking about. So spoiler alert, here it comes. This is from test five. So on this one, we're gonna start going through and you'll see that we run into a little bit of an issue. So it says, as far as goals go, we want to indicate the California red-legged frogs uh, classification category. So we're looking for California red-legged frogs classification category. All right, choice A. Species on the list, which includes the frog, are classified as either endangered or threatened. So that is not telling me the, the frog's classification. It's just telling me that these are two options, basically. So A is out. B, the California red lake frog appears on the list of at-risk species. That does tell me its classification, so I would keep it. Choice C, according to the FWS, the California red-legged frog is in the endangered category, in danger of extinction throughout most or all of its range. That is also telling me its classification, so I'd keep choice C. Since I have two, I know that I'm gonna have to look at the notes at some point. But anyway, let's look at choice D. Likely to soon become endangered, the California red leg frog is classified as threatened by the FWS. So now I have three answers that are all doing the thing that they're supposed to do. So this would be an example of when you need to look at the notes. So let's look at the notes and kind of figure out which one of these things is true. Even within the notes, I'm not necessarily going to need to read all of them. I just know that I'm focusing on the classification of the, um, what is his name? The red, the red, <laughs> the red-legged frog, the California red-legged frog. All right. So I see in the last note here, it says, the California red-legged frog is likely, likely to soon become endangered. Okay, so let's see if I can get rid of answers just based on that. D says likely to soon become endangered. C says it is endangered. So that would be wrong. And B says at risk. Uh, so let's, let's just specify at risk and likely to become endangered. Those both seem similar. And then if I look at some clarification in my notes, it says a species that is likely to soon become endangered is classified as threatened. So threatened is not the same of, as at risk. So I would get rid of B and then likely to soon become endangered, likely to soon become endangered. It lines up perfectly with my notes. So then my choice is D. So that's what step three would look like for you. So like I said, pretty easy, right? These command of evidence questions, on the other hand, not so easy. So you're going to want to watch this video next.